Hey everyone, welcome back to Fighting Spirit Film Festival. It's Jess. I have a special guest with me here today. Please introduce yourself. Hello guys, my name is Leroy Kincaid and I'm a writer, director and uh, company founder of Nocturnal Pictures. You know what's actually really funny? A couple of days ago, um, I got a new TV and your film came up on Movie Dome. Oh really? What, uh, the last right, yeah? Yeah, it came up there. I was like, let me just quickly Google that. The kind of the plot sounds interesting. And then you were the director. I was like, oh, wow. It's quite crazy how, um, you know, obviously we've gone through the pandemic, COVID and all that stuff. I mean, it's quite crazy how fast the time's gone from when we did that to sort of now. It's like, feels like years ago. It was like 2019 when I shot that. It's like crazy how fast the time's gone. This new TV has channels for like it has a martial martial arts action channel specifically it's got a short film channel cool cool when did you get it did you get it recently yeah so yours came up on movie dome movie dome i'm i'm not too 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 sure i i do you know what i don't even really watch tv that much i'm like i pretty much my tv is pretty much youtube um so a, anything like that movie dome i've never heard of that um is it like on you know like on the smart tv is it on yeah one of those little bits oh, yeah. okay, I'll have to have a little look. do you not get notifications when your film is like showing on tv if believe it or not no oh. it, it, it's it's really um distribution is really interesting because what happens is a company will purchase the rights of the movie and they just basically exploit those rights in the territory and you don't really hear of where it goes uh, Believe it or not, you're, it, it, it's it's surprising like how uninvolved you are with the release of your projects. It, I I always thought that like a filmmaker or a director, writer, whatever, they're like really involved with that part of it. But for some strange reason, it's like you literally are once you've sold your movie in that territory, um, or not sold, depending on how the the deal is struck up. You know, they just basically look to put it out on whichever platforms it goes on. Um, so when it came out on Sky, over like when it first done its round, like in 2022, it came out on Sky over here. And like, literally, we didn't, we wasn't aware that it was coming out on that platform straight away. Uh, you know, it went out on Amazon. Um, there's a there's a section of Amazon called Freebie. It, it was on that. Uh, I still think it's on there. But when it all came out on those little things, it's like you wasn't fully fully aware that it was coming out until like near the release or at the point in time it's quite it's a shame it's not so more involved it'd be nice to be more involved with that stuff and then you could be like hey everyone my film is on tv you can go watch it now but you can't be you can't kind of promote it after it's all done yeah believe it or not like when when the film like obviously when when it first came out like in 2021 it came out like um around like october sort of time november sort of time in the states now obviously you know they let us know about that and the guys out there you know they were, they were trying to get us on a lot of podcasts and stuff just so we could sort of drum up some um, media coverage with regards to like the last riot and you know just the future of it and plans with like my, my career and stuff in the future so it was quite involved from that side of it when it first came out and then just as the window closes down like it's not that you're less involved but you just don't really hear so much about things that are going on with it. It's like, oh, oh, it's there. Okay, cool. Like we got um, a release of it coming out uh, sometime this month. Uh, no, early next month in Cambodia. Uh, so it's going to like a theatrical um, run out there. But like, you know, that was, that was in the mix, spoke about like briefly ages ago. And then there's like, there's like been nothing around it. So it's like, you have to try and, drum up some interest and stay as positive as possible all the while you're doing it it's um unfortunately just not involved that much in that side i think more if you're in if you're involved in the studio system type of um, film releases then you tend to get I, I would imagine you tend to get much more of like you know your, your press coverage and you're more involved with release of strategy of the movie whereas um independently you know sometimes it's just like they take it and they just run with it and you just go okay cool like but let's also talk about Ascendance, which is your new short yeah. film. Okay. <laughs> but before we get onto Ascendance, let's scroll back through your career and talk about your times as a wrestler. So when did you oh, yeah. and how did you get your start in wrestling? 
Yeah, I mean, throwing it back now. Um, so I was 15 years old when I started pro wrestling. Uh, did that for a good number of years. Enjoyed it, loved it, hated it, all at the same time. Um, I, I'd never, I'd never look back on my wrestling career as something that I ever despised or hated. Like I really, really just loved it. There was just um, for me towards the end of my um, my career, I was very fortunate to have had. A whole multitude of matches. Uh, I had had uh, some very good training experience up until the point in time when I stepped away. Um, I, I trained out in the States um, with a wrestler called Chris Benoit. I had a session out there with him, a guy called William Regal, and uh, another one called Dave Taylor, and uh, American Dra Dragon. You know, he was um, quite a, a he, well, he's still a big name now. Like, you know, a few of these guys are like still really massive. And I'd gone as far as I could. I think creatively I had burnt myself out in wrestling. Mm. I think, you know, um, filmmaking and writing stories and, you know, being an actor or something like that, you know, you're, you're much more involved from what I perceive for me as a creative um, standpoint. I, I felt like in wrestling, I was just turning up to shows, getting told, where you know where where, where the, the match is going what the plan is and you're pretty much just not involved in what what the outcome ends up coming out which is fine and it's not for everybody um you know that the same thing goes on but i just was never very good at um playing the background politics mm -hmm. so well so i think because of the result of that it stifled my career a little bit so i was like you know i'd gone you know, gone, gone pretty far. You know, I, I was in the process of signing with WWE um, for a period of time in my career, which I'm very, very fortunate uh, because I think when I look back, you know, the little child in me would have bloody absolutely have loved the fact that I got in a WWE ring and had a match, which is still on, um, it's still on WWE Network actually to this day. So that's something off my bucket list. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I stepped away in 2012. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd gone, I'd gone as far as I was comfortable to have gone. I think, mm. had I'd not stepped away, I was having, I was 28 at the time. I was having back issues. You know, my back was like obliterated. You know, from all of the high flying moves and stuff I was doing. And I think because of somebody, my my build doing some of the flips and stuff, the impact is like so much more like larger. You know, like, and I think just over time, it just folded my back up. And I was like, you know, you know, one day I was putting on my socks after getting out, like just getting out of bed. And I was like, wow, I'm 28 and I feel like 90 years old. The future can't go that way because that way is only, I'm only going to end up getting worse. You don't get better. So, um, yeah, I got, got to the point where I was like, nah, it's time to hang up the boots and, you know, I feel very fortunate as well because most wrestlers, when they quit, they end up getting back into it. L like, you know, three, four, five years down the line, they, they get drawn back to it. Well, that last time when I had my last match um, at the Troxy in London, was that was the last match I had with a guy called Carlito. It was pretty much one of my highest profile matches I'd had to date. Uh, in the UK. And it's weird because it was like, it was probably would have been, been, a period of time after that that had catapulted me even further into going up the ranks of being a top professional wrestler in the UK. But I and I just got to that point where I was like, no, nah, I'm I'm cooked. I'm I'm happy to leave on a high and uh not not stay on the stage where, you know, like I was getting really good shows, I was getting main event matches, which was sweet. It's what you want, right? But I'd got to that point where I was filling up space on the stage and not, I wasn't enjoying it and I wasn't loving it. And I just didn't want to be that guy that's just on a show because I can be on a show when there's somebody else with the passion and the desire that, that I don't, I had the passion to a point, but I didn't love it enough to stay in it. And I, and I wanted to give with respect, I wanted to give somebody else that chance to shine because I just I was just taking up room there so I was just uh, sort of very thankful that I could become aware of that at the time because it's very difficult for people to let something go and turn on to a, a new career because 
it's just not easy when you're so familiar with that space, you know. How did you find the career transition from wrestler to filmmaker? And how did you transition into a different career? So, so the transition itself, believe it or not, wasn't, it wasn't like straight away. Like I, I'd been in 2010, I started, I guess you'd say down the road of like writing, like I started writing little bits. I, I, I was say that like, I was very, very bad at writing to start. Like I wasn't good. I definitely wasn't good. And I think I just dabbled a bit with it and it it's stuck in my head a little bit for a couple of years while I was wrestling. I, when I left wrestling, I'd for a period of time been doing a bit of music stuff. You know, I was, uh, I, I, I thought I was going to be like a LL Cool J or someone like that. You know, I don't even know the hell I was kidding back then, but I, I wanted to do music, but I was just looking for a creative outlet. You know, mm. I, I would say I was just trying to find something that wasn't wrestling. So I did music for about two years after wrestling because I didn't go straight into writing, as I said. But what I found that I was doing while I was doing my music, I become very excited about making the music videos for the, the tracks I was doing. There's something nudging me to like make stuff like something nudging me about like I just loved the the creative process of getting an idea in my head of what I saw and then putting it down in a video I was like you know what maybe I'll just do a short film you know I I had some experience obviously from if you look at like performing performance side of wrestling you know I'd been a performer for years up to this point so it, like the acting stuff wasn't wasn't a stress so i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna just be in this role uh do a martial arts thing you know had a background from um taekwondo and stuff like that years and years ago so i'm gonna do a little bit of a, a fight film like, put this little short film together inspired by the manga comic um crying free man what i ended up doing was i'd done a short fan film uh, my first short film proper short film back in 2014 called uh free man new world order so still on YouTube now, like this old short. But this is what started my um, my process and progress into actually going, do you know what? Like, yeah, the acting stuff and that is all fine. I'll pick up stuff here and there. But my main passion is telling the story and writing and directing. So I did a short fan film in 2014 called Free Man. I then did another short fan film um, called Max Payne Retribution, uh, inspired by... Um, Max Payne, but it's one of my favorite like computer games ever. So I was like, right, let me just make this short film. But something was different with this one. So in Max Payne, you know, I was playing uh, a, a character called Jack Lupino, but I was very focused on like, yeah, it's cool to be an actor and do a little bit, but actually I want to be able to shoot it. I want to be able to tell this story. So I made sure that I wasn't in as much as I was in in the first little short in a little bit of it in a couple of key roles but not or key key scenes sorry but i wasn't in it like anywhere near as much mm -hmm. but while i was doing that process i really found i guess you would say my vibe for i really actually just want to be a storyteller like i really love the storytelling process and um after after i did um max Payne in 2016 came out in 2017 i just immersed myself in actually right if i'm going to be serious about writing and directing i need to really you know because i was very green um for a while even up until the point of doing the last right i would say you know i was um quite green around a few areas but what i did is like i just started absorbing like loads of information with regards to like writing um storytelling story structure and finding my voice like I, I just wanted to find my voice I think you know um, that was very important because it, it's just easy just to go out and just make a film and just go and do anything for the sake of it but you know you you have to know what you're bringing to the table and um, because of some of my experiences from things in the past you know I was an ex-undertaker like like legitimate undertaker and seen all sorts of mad shit that most people would never probably ever see in their lifetime because I have that. And because I have a lot of 
dark real life references that I can bring into my work that naturally finds its way in my work. So all of the stuff I do now, it usually has a sort of dark undertone somewhere. You feel as if with like finding your filmmaking style, like it's a big choice you have to make as in this is the genre I'm going to be going to be doing. This is how I'm going to be marketing myself. Or is it, I'll do it for this film, but this, the next film, I'm going to try and do something different. I would say, I think for me, but the, and this is my personal perspective and opinion. And, you know, there'll be people that will have a different one. For, for me, I believe if I'm going to sit at a table and contribute to a conversation, it's so important that I bring what I see of this world to the mm -hmm. conversation and not, not be trying to paint by numbers and tick a box and fit a narrative that I think people want me to do. I've got to find that within myself, which means I need to have my opinion. I need to see the world and know the world that I see. And how do I want people to perceive this world I see in this little microcosm? So I think it's probably one of the most important parts of a filmmaker's journey that they find their perspective of how they see the world in their work. If someone said to me, Leroy, go out there and do comedy, I'm going to absolutely tell you I would not be the best person for it. Weirdly, I might be in a way, but I don't care about it because my my viewpoint of the world is one that, yeah, I think, you know, we've got both light and dark in this world, but I have a viewpoint that for me means that, like, you know, I like to have a laugh and a giggle, but the stories that I want to tell are ones where they come from a place of deep-seated emotional trauma coupled with very dark anger that might result in some light at the end of the tunnel you know uh so i think probably the most important aspect of a filmmaker's journey as a whole is making sure that they just have a viewpoint on their stories and a viewpoint of the stories they ultimately want to make you know because it you know when you um when you start out on your journey of filmmaking, you know, you don't really know really what really excites you straight away. I, I mean, some people might know. I, I didn't quite know. You know, it took a little bit of trial and error. It, it took a bit of finding what I like in my work, but also resonating with the fact that what I like in my work is actually things that I used to watch years and years and years ago, not modern cinema, but like older cinema, you know, some Hong Kong style uh, cinema and um, films like The Crow and films of that nature, you know, like it, it's about staying true to my viewpoint there. So it, it can be tricky when, when you're trying to do it, because I think, you know, in the end, we, fo we focus so much on everybody else's work that we don't focus on enough on our own. And we're trying to like, oh, we, what genre is popular today? Oh, well, let's do horror because I'll just do horror because I can do it really cheap. But if your viewpoint isn't one that has some real perspective on the type of horror you're telling, you're not, you're sort of doing your career a, disinjust, a disinjustice because you might just be better off grounded in that, like, you know, that comedic type of style or drama or, or period whatever you want to tell um so i think that's it's probably the best part of the journey is when you find your voice and you find your viewpoint you you don't really focus so much on what everybody else is doing or what's popular you just want to tell your version of that world that you see